Hello everybody. Today I'm going to uh, rank what's left of the Marvel Universe, like I mentioned I was going to try and do yesterday, but on the second, but didn't end up working out. So today is 11 and let's get started with, uh, I'm just going to show what the titles are and then give some thoughts on them before um before I do my ranking portion. So, um, I'll be ranking them in, in the format of five shows separate from the movies. Um, there's a bunch of movies. <laughs> Not gonna count them currently, but I'll count them after I show off the show, or after I show you the shows. So we got the first season only of Agent Carter. I want to get the second season. It should have been renewed for a third because it le there was a cliffhanger that ended towards it. Um, and then I got the first two seasons out of seven for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And the first of like three or four seasons of Jessica Jones. Um, the things that I'm talking about today, I've seen all. So, we won't have an instant like The Gifted, where I haven't seen the entire thing. So I've seen these all the way through. And then we got um, Daredevil Season 2. So, these shows are all pretty good. Uh, it's going to be a little different, difficult to uh, rank them accordingly, because I thoroughly enjoy all of them. But first... There are 14 movies in five shows, or seasons of shows. So, um, I'll go ahead and rank the shows now that I've shown, or now that you've seen them. Um, I think in first place is going to be Agent Shield Season 1 with Season 2 in second place in the favorite positions, um, followed by Agent Carter in third place, um, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. started just after, um, 2012's The Avengers, and it followed events that happened in the movie while having no impact on the movies at all. Um, so, like, when S.H.I.E.L.D. fell in Captain America 2, it was reflected in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Hydra was on the rise, and then things got interesting. You could tell when Doctor Strange showed up, because Ghost Rider opened a Doctor Strange portal with his his chain whip thing. Um, and Agent Carter takes place immediately following World War II. Uh, where Russians are starting to uh, misbehave in New York and cause some problems. And then she moves out to L.A., Agent Carter does, to work for the SSR there. And uh, that season gets a little complicated because there's this um, elemental force going around causing problems. But um, I think in fourth er, in fourth place is Jessica Jones. Um, I did thoroughly enjoy this season of the show. I saw pieces of season two, but um, I like how this one it says right on the back it's a slow burn. But um, it really takes time to like flesh out the characters instead of just being like. Hey, here's all these spectacular abilities that people can do. And it introduces Luke Cage a couple of times. Um, he has a thing for Jessica. Um, and then in last place, not because it's it's not good or anything, but that's because I like the other ones better, I guess, is Daredevil Season 2. Um, I like the direction this one was going. I haven't seen all of season three yet, although it is on Disney Plus, so I can check it out later. 
I just have to find times where I'm, uh, where my parents aren't around because they don't like uh, MA and R rated content. But that's fine. Um, now to show what what movies we have here, we have the Blade Four film collection. Yeah, it is four because the the House of Cthulhu that started Blade the series is in, is included in this this otherwise trilogy pack. Um, then we got a Blu-ray for the 2003 Hulk. I also have the regular DVD of it, but I didn't bring that case for that one down because multiple cases. Um, and I've got the director's cut and the uh, theatrical version of the Daredevil movie. Uh, I don't have the case for the theatrical cut. And then we have the Again, the theatrical and extended versions of Elektra, but I haven't seen the extended director's version, so I'm not able to share my thoughts on it because I haven't seen it, or I learned from when I did that previously. Then we have two cuts of Fantastic Four, the original. The extended version is pretty good. I didn't notice a whole lot that was different about it, but it's still pretty good. Pretty solid uh, addition to the franchise. Or remake of, or not remake, extended variation of the original movie from the franchise. Um, so these ones will probably be ranked together since they're the same exact movie, and that would make sense. Um, then we have Fantastic Four: Rise of the Silver Surfer. This is the last of the good Fantastic Four movies until the MCU version comes out. Um, then we got one that's not so great, but I find it as a guilty pleasure. I mean, I enjoy it enough. Uh, Fan Four Stick. It's not a great movie, but I have a lot of fun pointing out how bad it is when I watch it. So that's why that's here. And then Howard the Duck Special Edition. I didn't know this was a Marvel property until I saw the back of the package. And he showed up in both Guardians of the Galaxy movies, so I could have included this in my MCU ranking, but I didn't think it would make sense since it's technically not in the MCU. Um, but we'll talk about this one a little bit more in a, si in a minute here. Um, next up, we have Aven Adventures in Babysitting. I've watched this and the remake. For di that Disney Plus did, and both versions are pretty good. I like this one a little bit more, but the original or the new one is pretty good too. So, if you're hard pressed trying to figure out one to watch, I'd go with the original. But that's not saying much because it because the other one it the, the remake is pretty a pretty solid version. Then we have um, The Punisher with, with Tom Jane and Travolta. Um, the only one, the only part of this, this movie that doesn't make any sense is there's this one scene where this guy in like a striped outfit shows up and picks a fight with the Punisher and then he's gone and never mentioned again throughout the rest of the movie. So it, that's the only thing really hold, that would be holding this one back, but it is what it is. Um, I've heard there's a, an extended cut or something, only on DVD, that clears up some of the convoluted plot lines here. Um, then we have the extended cut of, the extended and the theatrical, only the extended cut case for it, but Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage, I have the extended cut and the theatrical cut. My uncle got me the, the theatrical cut. Uh, he copied it from his own collection, and he gave me a, um, he gave me the original of it, and he kept the copy um, for himself. And then, kind of a sequel, kind of a reboot with a new actor um, is 
Punisher Warzone. This one's my favorite of the two Punisher films that I have because there's more action and it seems like there's more on the line for character in this one. Um, the Punisher does appear in season two of Daredevil and they fight a little bit, uh, which was entertaining to watch. And you're like, hey, I'm familiar with that character. I want to see more about more to do with him. Look at me. Wow. And then I have Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, just a theatrical cut. I don't know if there is an extended cut on this one, but uh, this one's also pretty good. Uh, it's a little cheesier than the original and the extended cut of the original. Uh, and if you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about, because there's just some silly stuff that's like, well, that's funny. I wonder what that what purpose that holds. But anyway, so now to rank these ones, uh, I'm gonna start with last place because I noticed I started with first place last time. So in last place is Van Forstick. Um, I don't mind having this movie, but I'm, I think a director's cut might do it a lot of good. Because this is one where, where um, studio executives took over and like threw out whatever the director had done, so it's a studio product instead of what the director had envisioned. Um, yeah, so it's not not great for that reason. Um, let's see how many movies did I see last time. So in in 13th place is Howard the Duck, because it's hard to tell where this one fits in the scheme of things. Um, he appears in Guardians of the Galaxy movies, like I said, but he doesn't have that big a part in those. He just kind of, like, appears out of nowhere. Um, then... In 12th place is all four Blade movies. Since they're in a four film collection, I'm going to count them all as one title. Um, the original Blade was pretty good. A good introduction to the franchise. Um, it had a few things that I wasn't that wasn't particularly fond of in it. Um, Uh, but that, those were problems that were fixed in, in Blade 2 and Blade Trinity. And then House of Cthulhu is kind of its own thing because it had a different different actor because they got the actor for, who went on to be in the Blade, the series, uh, the TV series to play Blade in that. And he did, he did a pretty good job. He doesn't quite live up to Wesley, but it, it um, Wesley Snipes was done with the character. And I guess a nightmare to work with. So, um, let's see, that was 12th place. And 11th place is the 2003 Hulk movie. Um, and it's not altogether a bad movie, it's just its age shows with, with like the visual effects and whatnot. It, even though it's just from 2003, the CG. CGI effects were were not all that good, and mm. excuse me. Um, one thing I thought was interesting about it, and and what in creative that wasn't present in any other version of the Hulk, um, live action stuff, is that the Hulk himself increased in size and strength the, the angry the more angry he became instead of just getting more powerful he actually like increased in size and mass like became more like hulking for lack of a better term um then we got in next place is the is either version of daredevil the movie um they aren't it's not a a, 
the director's cut's not bad. It actually like like uh, fleshes out what or more of what needed to be in the theatrical version, which makes it better than the theatrical version in my mind. But it still left me wanting more, like to dive more into some of the characters and such. They dived more into the um, lawyer business of side of things and less into like character development. But you know, it's still a, a an improvement over the theatrical, which theatrical cuts just fine. Um, so and then Electra comes next in I think we're at tenth place. Let's see. One, two, three, five, there's fourteen. In ninth place. In ninth place is is Electra. Um it's got a really bizarre story. And but it's got some cool action sequences in it. Oh. Inside of it. Um so um Jessica Garner does or Jennifer Garner does well with the script she was provided with. Um I like her her uh psi weapons and the red outfit she has on is kinda nice. Um then in eighth place I think. Assuming I've kept track properly. Yeah, I counted right. Is uh, the the theatrical and the extended cuts for Fantastic Four with Chris Evans. Um, I hold these ones in higher esteem because of Chris Evans, honestly, because after this he went on to be the Human Torch. Uh, or, well, be the Human Torch. He's the Human Torch in this. He went on to be Captain America. There you go. And he's done phenomenal in that role. I think that started here. Um, so that's 8th and 7th place. In 6th place, I like Rise of the Silver Surfer a bit more than the original movie. Um, it has the voice of one Lawrence Fishburne in it. Um, he provides the voice of the Silver Surfer himself, so it may not look like him, but it sounds like Lawrence Fishburne. And um, yeah, now we're in the top five. Uh, in fifth place is the Punisher. That weird stuff with the striped shirt guy or striped outfit guy kind of holds this one back a bit because it makes no sense. They don't explain it. They don't talk about it after it happens, and it's just kind of like, oh, here's something that happened. <laughs> um, in fourth place is Adventures in Babysitting. Um, this one is a better movie than this one, and I didn't know this was Marvel until I saw on the back. Marvel Entertainment, the Mighty Thor trademark. Um, so those are where I would put those. In third place is Spirit of Vengeance. And our runner-up is the extended slash theatrical cut of Ghost Rider, the original. But taking first place... Uh, as my favorite of this bunch of movies, Punisher Warzone. Um, I like this one because not only does it introduce yet another Jigsaw Killer guy, but it's a different Jigsaw than is present in the Saw franchise and has no, no correlations at all. He, they just call him Jigsaw because they had to Jigsaw his face back together with plastic surgeons. So that's that's where he gets that name. So this guy on the back here, I don't, I don't know how well you can 
the absolute right um, so that's him um, they had to jigsaw his face back together because he fell in the glass shredder and then his the glass while it was being shredded shredded him so uh, that's all I have to say for this ranking uh, but um, either later today or maybe tomorrow I'll have another ranking um, but for that one I need to watch Planet Hulk uh, again Invincible Iron Man again and it's a movie uh, Iron Man's first animated feature and I need to watch X-Men the Animated Series, uh, not the one from the 90s, I've seen that one, but um, I've got more of an anime where it takes place in Tokyo, and it's English dub. I need to re-watch that, or watch that one for the first time. I started it a few months back, but didn't get very far because I ended up getting kind of busy and losing track of where I was, and then I was like, nah, this... I rather watch these, so I gotta watch through that and those two animated movies that I mentioned, and then the Ultimate Avengers one and two. I need to watch through that and Avengers Confidential, Black Widow, and Punisher. Another Punisher movie coming your way, but um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, it'll probably, like I said, be later today or maybe tomorrow, but I'll try and do it as soon as I can. But uh, in the meantime, keep talking movies, and I hope you enjoy my content.